This is Terms of Reference. I'm your host, Stephen Laddick. Nesreen Barakat has more than 20 years of professional experience in the area of economic and social development, working with governments, international organizations, civil society, and the private sector in Jordan. More recently, she served as a Minister of Social Development, Minister of Public Sector Development, and General Director of the National Aid Fund. Prior to that, she was a council member at the Greater Amman Municipality, economic advisor to the Jordanian National Commission for Women, and a director of the Competitiveness Unit at the Ministry of Planning and International Cooperation. Nasreen has extensive experience in managing and implementing result-oriented technical assistance projects. In 2005, Nasreen founded 2Excel Consulting & Associates, a company focused on the provision of consulting services related to socioeconomic, administrative, and local development studies. Nesreen holds an MBA degree from the Business School at Durham University in the UK and a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science from the University of Jordan. She also received intensive international training at Harvard and Berkeley Universities on enhancing the competitiveness of nations, scenario planning, strategy development, and implementation. I spoke with Nesreen in Amman, Jordan. Hi, Nesreen. Thank you so much for being on the Terms of Reference podcast. Thank you so much, Stephen, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And where are we speaking with you today? I'm actually in my office in Shmisani in Amman. Nasreen, tell us about what is it that you do right now as a humanitarian aid professional? Well, uh, I'm actually now uh, heading a consulting firm in the, in the field of socioeconomic uh, development. And this consulting firm is uh, is working on uh, assessing and evaluating development projects, uh, helping institutions uh, to strategize their way forward, to assess their performance so far, and to, to do better uh, in the field. Um, I founded this company in 2005, and um, I'm, I'm uh, providing more of a supervisory role to the work of my team. Uh, however, um, most of my focus today in the company is to expand the business of, uh, of our work to the region uh, and also to look for a business partnership with other similar companies in the region as well. So I'm focusing on the strategic uh, future direction, if you like. But besides that, I'm active member in the civil society. I'm also a member in uh, the community-based organization advisory group of the UN Women, where we provide advice on policy issues, implementation, and practical development projects towards empowering women in Jordan and the Arab region at large. I'm also a member of the Business and Professional Women Association, and this is uh, a very dear association where I'm trying through it to give and mentor and support younger uh, women to pursue their opportunities in, 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 in the economic uh, sphere and be an active uh, economic members in the society and the, and, and the economy. I'm also a founding member of the UN Global Compact Network in Jordan, and another uh, number of uh, organizations like the Competition Organization, Export Consortium for Olive Oil, etc. So um, I tried really to balance between my work currently at the, uh, at the office and my role as a member of the society where I'm supposed to give um, and make Jordan better, hopefully. I hope, given that fantastically large list of organizations you're, you're, you're associated with that you find some time for to relax as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 to be honest, a, a difficult person to relax. My husband used to tell me this. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's why you're an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell me why, tell me about some of the more specific work that uh, to Excel does. You said you know you work on strategy, you work on assessing performance, these types of things. Is there a specific example you maybe could give us about either a project you're working on right now or a, a client that you're working with? Yeah, sure. We are actually working with a number of clients, mainly international organizations, uh, donor agencies, uh, uh, civil societies. Uh, we've um, 
we've completed recently uh, the development of the Decent Work Country Profile for Jordan. It's a very important document where it hides, uh, highlights the major recent developments uh, and the progress across the Decent Work Agenda. Uh, and it helps the policymakers in order to uh, take the right decision for realizing decent work for all. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, profile to be uh, developed for an Arab country. Uh, also, we did uh, recently, and actually we will be presenting next week, a rapid assessment of child labor among us Jordanian and Syrian refugees. As, as you know, Stephen, uh, we have number, unfortunately, of Syrian refugees. And uh, unfortunately, again, there is a huge number of child labor among both Jordanians and Syrians. So we did this with a specific focus on the urban informal sector. Uh, also, we did an assessment for the USAID uh, Food Security and Resilience Building Program in Yemen. And also, we did assessment for the private sector in the Arab countries, focusing more on FDIs, uh, domestic investment, SMEs, entrepreneurship, women economic empowerments for the UNOPS. Uh, we also did um, evaluation for an EC-funded peace-building project in Yemen. Um, and we did uh, for the UNFPA an end-of-cycle program evaluation uh, where we also supported them in drafting their way forward for the coming cycle, 2013 to 2017. And when you when you say we did this, uh, tell me about our. Do you have uh, a large staff? It sounds you know this is a quite a portfolio you're talking about. So do you have a large staff you're talking about? Do you hire outside consultants? Um, are you partnering with other organizations? How do you actually implement that work? Yeah. Uh, well, no, we are a small office, small to medium, if you like. Um, we have um, around 10 members of a staff in total. Um, I would say six technical people. Uh, we depend largely on consultants uh, and associates that work with us on mission-based. Uh, we also tap uh, into the expertise of associate co uh, consulting firms in the region. And you know the technology today, it makes life really easy, especially for the kind of business I'm in, consultancy. Uh, so, yeah, it is, um, it is very interesting work. It requires a lot of effort, but it requires as well uh, a wide spectrum of expertise. Um, being uh, specialized in, in, in development is something, and being also focused, for example, with uh, childhood or uh, uh, adolescent, um, you need another uh, technical expertise with this regard. So mm -hmm. we try always to um, uh, match the right team, assemble the right team around the mission, and work on it to uh, give the best uh, quality work for our client. Now, let's let's talk about you for a second. How did you find yourself in this position that you're in today? Where where did you start from? What did you uh, you know when you were a young woman uh, in school? You said you know I I know my direction is going to be social development and economic development. Or take us through that history. How did you sort of get to where you are today? I have never ever knew that I'd be here. <laughs> Actually, you know, that's that's uh, I hate to set you up like that, but that is such a typical answer from everyone. I had no idea I would end up here. <laughs> Actually, when I started first, I was in the uh, ICT uh, domain, if you like. I, I had my bachelor degree in information technology and I was analyst, programmer, and I focused maybe four years of my life there. Then all of a sudden I decided I can't, I can't wake up another day <laughs> doing the same and talking to the machines. So I decided to change. Uh, and there where I felt doing my MBA would make the, uh, would help me actually to do this change because I wanted uh, to work with people. I wanted to work with, uh, to understand better the economies, the situation, the, the social understanding of the community. I wanted that, but I didn't know from where to start. Um, then I went into a journey of different uh, profession, but they were dovetailing more or less to where I'm today. 
Um, until I was heading uh, the competitiveness team, it was a team that was actually supervised by Michael E. Porter, whom I owe him really a lot. Um, and uh, we did that national team. We were uh, the arm of the government to support the private sector. So I worked on more than 17 economic activity in Jordan here, trying to identify their competitiveness, working with the private sector and the government to make it better uh, and uh, in terms of growth. Then um, I, I, I felt that I really need to go to the private sector. I felt I'm, I'm, I'm saying too much to the private sector and I'm not sure I do understand what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge for me uh, and uh, um, a dream maybe to be in the private sector. Uh, and there where I took my hard, very hard decision to leave uh, the public sector after 12 years and start from scratch uh, with the private sector as entrepreneur um, with, yani, without uh, sustainable income, without um, job security, without anything, while I was at a high rank at the government, uh, being a director of uh, a, a department at the Ministry of Planning, with yani, whatever uh, special things that you get. Mm -hmm. So I found myself in my choice, with my choice, that I have to, uh, that I want to go to the private sector. Was there, a, <laughs> was there a moment, you know, when when you were there at the Ministry of Public Development, where, you know, it, it, was it sort of just a build up over a, a, a long time, or was there a moment where you're like, oh, I need to to, to make the jump right now? Yeah, it was actually um, a moment where I felt. Um, it was, yani, the, the idea was in my mind, Stephen, but um, I, I didn't uh, have the courage to move forward. But at a certain moment, I felt that um, I'm done with the public sector. I can't give mm. any more and uh, I want to learn more uh, in order to give better. So at this moment, I decided to leave. And it was a very, very hard decision. Actually, to the point when I left uh, the ministry, I couldn't look back. <laughs> sure. uh, I was really attached to, to my work. It wasn't typical work. It was um, very uh, exciting with the new work every day and the new engagement. So it was a very interesting work. But uh, uh, for me as well, it was. Uh, I was very certain that I want to go to the private sector. I even remember the minister at that time. He told me, uh, listen, Nisreen, I see you um, as a pro yani, promising leader in the public sector. So if you want to be a minister, <laughs> you have to stay in the public sector. Sure. And then I said, no, I want to go to the uh, private sector. I, I, I want really to do that at this time of my life. And after 10 years of being in the private sector, they got me back in the government as a minister. <laughs> <laughs> and you did that for one year, yes? I did that for one year, yeah. I did it actually in um, uh, two cabinets. One, uh, I was the minister of public sector development. And in another cabinet in 2012, I was the minister of social development. And were you able to do that and, and still keep your private company or did you have to leave the company and then come back or how does that work? Yeah, no, of course I had to leave the company, but the company kept on uh, working. Actually, since I established it, it from the first day, I did, uh, uh, I, I was, uh, I, I made it sure uh, that the company is uh, uh, standing up on the right uh, foot uh, in terms of institution, decision-making, uh, caliber, uh, delegation, all of this stuff. So um, I had to, uh, re to leave my job at the company and to resign actually completely because there, there shouldn't be... Uh, A conflict of interest. Yeah, exactly. Conflict of interest. Uh, but uh, it, that was very easy decision for me because already I had the uh, managing director there and I had the team. Uh, we went through a hard time uh, during this uh, couple of years, actually, uh, because a lot of work was coming. They were seeking 
me, if you like, uh, to give the advice and so on. And um, it was attached to my image, maybe. I don't know with my name. So they went through hard time, but they were able to uh, cope and sustain and grow. Uh, so even when I uh, went back to the company, it was also a very easy decision. And that is uh, yeah, something I'm very happy about, um, despite the difficulty at the beginning, uh, it was easier sure. uh, towards you've, later. You've touched on an interesting aspect of what it means to be an entrepreneur in this sector, that we have to juggle our time between delivering projects, um, working with our clients, and actually winning new projects. Right. How does that, how does winning new projects at 2Excel happen? Do you have you said you have six technical staff. Are the other four staff, are they administration, or do they, do they also focus just exclusively on business development, or how do you, how do you run that? Um, absolutely, Stephen. This is very correct. Uh, uh, situation, despite the uh, number of staff, I would say it's uh, medium, uh, but the situation is still very difficult. Uh, you want to ensure the, pr- the right delivery of uh, product or uh, service that you are um, doing for your client with the quality and on time, while you want also to... Um, Uh, capture new opportunities for new projects. In this case, we work in teams and we assign champion for each project. Uh, In the case of ongoing project, um, we assign the team. There is a champion who makes sure that uh, roles are uh, distributed correctly among the team and also will be the liaison with the client. Uh, as for the new project, we have an assessment uh, tool where we assess the opportunities that we get um, in terms of um, expertise, in terms of uh, whether they are in the core uh, of our business, whether we have track record to them, whether they fit in the timing uh, horizon that we have and the requirements uh, are available um, to us. Uh, then once we agree uh, from the four people, uh, there is the uh, financial person who is um, actually administrative and financial would work on the financial offer. Uh, technical people will work on the design of the methodology for the work. And also the business, we have a de- business development uh, officer who actually is assigned this role in addition to a role, uh, a working role in the field, uh, would put together the proposal. And um, we, uh, we, we carefully hunt for the proposals. Mm-hmm. Uh, we look for the client and uh, we assess our winning opportunity before pursuing that. Have you found that you're, you said that you're trying to expand regionally. Has the bulk of your work come from Jordan up to this point? And if so... How are you finding those tenders? Is it through email lists? Is it through public uh, announcements? Or how does that work? Or is it maybe through your network? Well, uh, uh, until this year or the year before even, the bulk of work was in Jordan. But as we now uh, looking to expand into the region, um, now we have more and more growing work in the region and in other developing countries in the region. Uh, We usually have uh, less of the online sources that publish RFPs, whether uh, sources from the UNDP, World Bank, USAID, EC, the European Commission, and, and many others, or whether a network. Uh, but to be honest, uh, our main marketing strategy, if you like, is uh, the word of mouth and the referral system from our clients. Uh, also previous experiences and follow-up missions with the same clients. And this is I'm very proud of, uh, that when we get to, uh, with a client, it's, um, it's a matter of a continuation, uh, continuous relationship. And this, um, it gives me also a very good indication that they are satisfied, happy, and willing to give us uh, more work. Um, yani in, we juggle around. We have our website, of course, and our Facebook. We try to be active in our Facebook in posting uh, interesting uh, articles and topics and being engaged with discussions around development. Uh, and this is how also we communicate indirectly with our clients. How much work do you think you bid on every year? Are you putting out proposals every week? Are you, you know, trying to win new business every week? Or do you have a, a particular 
a goal in mind for how much you want to grow? No, not really. Um, I, I would say uh, we win um, at least 70% of the proposals that we put. Um, oh, my, I look, 70%? Yes. Wow, that is a fantastic number. That's amazing. Uh, to be honest, we, Yanni, you, you, when you put a proposal as if you started the mission for us, uh, because there is a methodology when, when you design, design the methodology, when you are convincing the evaluators that you fit for the project. So we, we look at it as a challenging assignment by itself. Uh, we wouldn't put this offer, uh, effort, sorry, unless we feel that uh, the project is uh, likely to win. <laughs> and in this case, we put a lot of effort. In some cases, we actually and unfortunately do not win, sometimes to, for, for pricing reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes, uh, yeah, any competition is, is fierce. Um, but uh, we, we try to be rational about the proposal we put, and our uh, indicator is, would, yeah, is always how much did we able to get from what we have uh, proposed. Tell me about competition. Do you do you know the other firms in your country and your region that you're competing against pretty well? Are you on a on a on a collegial basis with them, or uh, is it sort of hit and miss? Um, no, actually, competition is very fierce uh, in the consultancy business. It's really uh, tough, um, and consultancy firm of similar size of. Uh, our size are many around. Uh, so it's not easy. And that's why we strategized since five years ago uh, towards a certain niche where we are now um, focusing more in terms of our proposals and in terms of our mission. And that is evaluate, monitoring and evaluation. We believe that this is something um, uh, wasn't there I would say, 10 years ago at all. Um, It started to emerge uh, five years ago, especially uh, in in the development project uh, with the donor community, where they started to think about, okay, are we result-oriented? Are we assessing our progress as we go? Um, uh, Did we assess the impact of our project? Are we learning uh, from the lessons we've done with the project uh, we implemented in, uh, and then contributed to the design of a follow-up project. So these are very critical questions. Earlier, uh, were not taken into consideration. And at that time, we were able to uh, understand the niche there. So uh, we focused more on building the capacity internally of our staff, building our track record in missions toward that. So in, in some cases, we could even take break even or with a very a small profit in order to build our track record with this regard. And we were able to connect with uh, international uh, specialized uh, companies and networks like Evel Mina Network and like Eurovel in, in France, uh, where we connected with them in order to build uh, further and to go jointly in evaluation projects. So today we are among few, I would say, uh, who are specialized in monitoring and evaluation. So, But as you know, competition is a moving target. This is not uh, something where you would just... Uh, feel you are there and uh, you relax. It's a moving target. You have always to be uh, innovative, to be new, to, to, to be updated and to be different from others uh, in order to, um, to survive. Mm-hmm. And what we went through in, in Jordan and the whole region, I would say, um, uh, for the past three years uh, and uh, the economic, the hardship economic that we went through made uh, the life even uh, tougher for the private sector. So even to survive um, uh, is, is considered like a growth. So how about a company that would grow really in, in, during these years? Um, we we always keep, this is my role today. You asked me earlier, Stephen, what would be your role in the company? Now my role is <laughs> to strategize, maneuver mm-hmm. with the company to see where 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 the safe um, uh, side or road for it to grow. 
Uh, many times as a, as a firm such as yours or as an independent consultant, the work that you do for your clients is obviously required and, and something that's asked for. But sometimes, you know, you'll go out and do an assessment or you'll do an evaluation and you'll, you'll produce your report and you give it to your client and it, 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 it isn't acted on. Do you find that that's the case with your clients or, or is there a different reception with the work that you do? Not always. In few cases, I would say, yes, we do find this. And it is very frustrating, <laughs> especially you are, uh, our uh, area of work is development. It means that uh, change, you are trying to contribute to the positive change. So when we put an effort um, in terms of understanding the context, analyzing it, and then giving advice towards uh, the change, and you see that the client is not moving, uh, this is frustrating. But to be honest, um, yeah, I rarely it happened with us because we do communicate all the way through with our client. So we consider it a partnership not a client and um, a provider and uh, service provider, but rather a partnership. So as we go, um, we communicate, we understand, we uh, get their buy-in. So there's no surprises towards the end, but rather a mutual understanding and a buy-in towards the action. Mm. Uh, and, and in many cases, that would be, especially that most of our clients... Um, are keen for change in development, uh, for developmental changes. So they are, they want to um, to see that change happening, and uh, it happened. Yani, um, I get uh, very happy to see um, we we actually supported Amman municipality in the design of the whole framework to establish um, uh, a parliament, uh, children parliament. Um, wow. Yeah, and uh, we designed the, uh, the, the, we were very practical and we tried to do with the same approach that the Ministry of Education is doing. So it was very practical, even for the uh, municipality of Amman, uh, where they w- were able to tap into other activities and be able to uh, build on it and, and have their own parliament uh, or uh, city council members uh, from the youth. And that was very, very interesting. Also, in another case, the UNFPA, we advised them, it is the UN Women, uh, the UN Fund for Population, we advised them um, to work with certain youth uh, organizations and to focus uh, on certain areas for the youth uh, with the adolescents in specific and so on. And I was very happy reading how they moved towards that uh, direction. So that really where it gives me happiness. Those are two great projects. That's fantastic. As you're expanding regionally, what are the challenges that you're facing uh, working in other countries outside of your home country. Um, and I'm thinking things like finding appropriate staff or consultants to work there, uh, working in other uh, public and, and legal systems. Are, are, there, are there specific challenges that you're finding that, that you're having to navigate? Oh, yeah, of course. You know that uh, w- when I say we are trying to expand regionally, um, then I'm here mentioning the Arab countries. And if you look at the Arab countries uh, today, there are a lot of challenges. Um, we are not as connected uh, as other uh, parts of the world. Of the world, uh, so it's difficult to find consultants. Uh, it's difficult also um, to communicate with the public administration there. Um, so there is a lot of difficulties. Our approach, um, we did follow two approaches in order to be able to penetrate that market and actually be present in order to uh, grow. Uh, One approach was to identify similar companies, uh, similar to us, in in the potential countries. We've already now signed a memorandum of understanding with a company in Egypt, another company in um, 
uh, in uh, Palestine, and uh, uh, we are um, it, it, when, when we decide to take a project in any of these areas, we work with the company to identify consultants and to um, uh, supervise uh, the mission. So, uh, identifying uh, consultancy firm in these co company in these countries would help us. Uh, work and uh, ensure the quality of our work there. Um, that was one way. And the other way was through the uh, uh, development agencies and international development agencies where we uh, took the risk of uh, bidding for the projects in other countries, like, for example, in Yemen, uh, the first project for us was we were yani, <laughs> holding our breath there. Mm. But then uh, it was followed by at least uh, five uh, missions with other clients. So once we were there, they started to know us, uh, referral system started to work and, and so on. So we got more work. Uh, it, it, it required, uh, required from us uh, courage, um, risk uh, to a certain extent, um, but of course studied risk. Uh, then uh, we were able to go to uh, penetrate one uh, set uh, number, in uh, Gulf countries we were not able to target or to penetrate and I don't think at the short to um, medium term we will. Um, I think what uh, yani, what they look at is different and I don't think even um, yani, what we are doing yani, there is a gap I would say sure there's is... a definite difference between the Gulf and yes. the more traditional Middle East I guess as we would call it um, you mentioned difficulty in finding consultants are, are you finding specifically because of language requirements that your consultants are always from the Arab world or are you able to find "Quote unquote international experts as well that you're able to work with." Uh, no, I don't think il, uh, the language is uh, is any obstacle, or or, or would consider it, I, mean, I would consider it as an obstacle at all. Uh, neither the nationality, uh, but the quality of the consultant, mm. uh, the person who who understands what they are doing, who can deliver. Uh, who deliver on time and who deliver up to your expectation. So this is the most important thing. And that's why we developed a database here internally where we have our consultants and we give them rank. Uh, so we, we, we rank them according to the uh, successful projects they did with us. And accordingly, that uh, we reflect this in, into their uh, fees and uh, in, in engaging them in more projects and more assignments. So it is very important for us um, to get the right person who understands and work in the same way we work. Uh, and one one yani one way where uh, I think uh, we are um, keen. Uh, to keep, I would say, as an attitude, is flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, we are flexible with the client. Um, we, we, once we agree with them uh, to uh, implement a mission, uh, if we see things need to be changed, or if the client decided to uh, uh, to do certain changes or to introduce uh, further uh, work, we do have this flexibility. And also, we have the patience to be flexible in, in, in terms of uh, their feedback and in terms of their expectation. And even in, in many cases, yeah, I mean, we give really much more than what it has been stated in the terms of reference. Um, we usually do not go to the terms of reference unless... Uh, there is a conflict, and we never reach to that point where mm. there is a conflict at all. So for us, uh, both should be satisfied. Both uh, sides, the client is the most important uh, part of the equation. Uh, so things has to be tailored to what they want and what they need. Um, of course, if we see something wrong, we would give that sincere advice but we wouldn't impose at all anything. 
uh, not all the consultants have this flexibility. They take it as if it's a mission and all what they care for at the end of the day is to complete the mission. For us, all what we care of uh, at the end of the day is to uh, make a change, is to make uh, the life better for the people. Mm -hmm. So especially we are in the development uh, domain. So we try uh, our best to make sure that uh, we are delivering what is needed. Tell me about... You know, I, I really appreciate you saying that you don't look at the DOR and that, you know, when, when you have a challenge with a client that you yeah. don't let it get to that point where you're sort of looking over the, the, you know, the specific sentences in the TOR. Can you give me a specific example of maybe a time when you had a challenge with a client or someone and how you were able to assuage that uh, through, you know, communication or just through a relationship? Uh, yeah, actually, we've been uh, working on a mission, um, and uh, we—I would say—we uh, underestimated uh, the effort that it required. Uh, we were actually uh, trying to assess corporate social responsibility environment in three countries: uh, Jordan, Lebanon, and uh, Palestine. And uh, we thought uh, that social, corporate social responsibility has, um, mat- uh, yani has grown uh, into a mature stage uh, during the past um, 10 years, I, I, th- I think. So our assumption was that we will depend largely on the field work, um, uh, sorry, on the disk work, uh, and also um, on publication from the different corporates. To our surprise, when we started the work, uh, we realized that, um, no, uh, although there were very interesting uh, examples, uh, corporates who really uh, institutionalized corporate social responsibility in a wonderful way, yet it's not as mature as we thought in the three countries. So the challenge to us was that we need to go into field. We need to gather information. We need to meet people one-to-one, uh, interview, send a questionnaire, uh, discuss with the uh, offices of the client uh, at each country. Uh, and we said, well, that was our risk, uh, sorry, our miscalculation. So we will bear the whole risk. Um, and accordingly, we decided to um, to do it correctly um, instead of saying, well, bad luck, there is no information. Our assumption was that we will depend on this research, but this is what we found. I can do that. Then I would be a typical consultant if, uh, if uh, I... <laughs> I can say it. Um, But what uh, we decided to do here is no. We we told them we will do the mapping of the corporate uh, uh, corporate social responsibility in these three uh, countries, and we will do that. Um, And we will able to do it. Uh, We it was a matter of extra effort, but very much more communication. Um, discussion into the field. And in these two cases, I had consultants from the two countries. Uh, so um, it's, mu- it's much more feasible, uh, Stephen, to have the consultant from the country mm-hmm. uh, than to mobilize your consultant. And actually, looking at it from the development eye <laughs> that I have, I prefer to do it in that way. Of course, you're using a local resource and exactly. you... Mm-hmm. Exactly. They understand it better and I'm benefiting that country. So um, they were flexible enough, going back to the flexibility point, and uh, they could they understood the situation. So we were able to bear the, the, the thing and uh, satisfy our client. You've talked about a number of uh, particular systems that you... Uh, you use in order to keep your business moving forward. You you have a database of consultants that you use. You have a particular assessment uh, process for building a proposal. Are there other particular systems, either administrative or project management maybe, um, or, or particular technologies? Uh, you said, you know, there's lots of wonderful technologies and you have an IT background. That Are there any particular things that you absolutely rely upon to yeah. not only run your business, but 
deliver efficiently for your clients and you know you just find that wow I couldn't live without this yeah the typical uh, management uh, software project management software and and uh, a database actually we introduced recently six months ago with uh, with the support from the vital voices whom I really appreciate their uh, their support uh, uh, mm-hmm. To, to women, uh, we were able to introduce a server, uh, and that was very important um, for security reasons, uh, security of information, I mean, the backup, the uh, pool of information. But beside all of these uh, typical tools that we have, I think what's uh, technology is growing in, a, in, a, in an amazing uh, way where it is helping us in, in our business in a beautiful way. For example, we are utilizing a virtual space in يعني, <laughs> tremendously. We use uh, the Dropbox to upload and share documents uh, among different consultants in different countries. We use, we use the webinars with Skype, like the school, yeah. to conduct meetings. So there is no need to... Um, to move. Uh, today I have a team actually who's working, um, one consultant from Yemen, another from Egypt, uh, and uh, a third from Tunisia, and an advisor from the United Kingdom, while the team leader is in Australia. And we are currently, <laughs> we are currently uh, doing a project on public administration in the Arab countries in transition. Uh, so imagine the tough situation and the tough assignment Absolutely. with this diversified uh, consultants and it's all virtually and they are doing beautiful, efficient work. So that is amazing. Um, but also, of course, the Internet is, uh, ha- يعني, was able to do a lot of uh, difference and, and change. Um, now in no time, um, I can, when, when I say disk research, and instead of saying it will take me 10 days, I would say two days or one day maybe, because today with the Internet, I can screen data, disk research, review previous uh, contributions of many other countries and get up to date data. So um, that wasn't possible many years ago. So the technology is um, to our side. The technology is helping um, is helping us a lot in our business. But that doesn't mean, uh, Stephen, my IT background. By the way, I'm very lousy today. With a <laughs> 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 <I'm> really uh, <laughs> I have a suspicion that you're probably much more savvy than you let on. Uh, Nazreen, you, you've, you've given us such a, a, a plethora of fantastic information. <clears throat> I always like to end our conversations with, a, with one question which is what advice would you give to either a young person or someone who's considering changing their career to become a part of the development world or humanitarian aid world? What, what critical advice would you give to them uh, about you know, becoming a part of this profession so that they can be successful? I would say if you have the passion, go for it. Uh, because such a work requires a sincere passion, requires... Um, a lot of work on the ground uh, from the field. Uh, it requires the person to be very practical in the approach, in the recommendation, in the understanding of the local context, uh, in communicating and sharing the findings, in listening to people needs and stakeholders and beneficiaries. So you need to be very uh, intellectual in terms of designing your tools to support uh, l- 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 development work. It's a wonderful uh, work. I love it. Um, I'm, I, finally, I find myself here. I'm actually even considering doing my PhD wow. in this field specifically because I really uh, found myself uh, in, in, in this field where I'm interacting with people and, and doing and contributing to the uh, change and the better of the world, hopefully. Nasreen, thank you so much for your time today. This has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much, Stephen. I, I also uh, enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Terms of Reference, a weekly podcast from aidpreneur.com. Find us on iTunes 
or at www.aidpreneur.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.